In this ultimate guide, we'll show you the six main benefits of wearing barefoot shoes, as well as the six types of barefoot shoes available on the market and which ones are best for you. Let's get started. The first benefit of wearing barefoot shoes is that they preserve the alignment of our toes. Misalignment of the toes, such as in the case of bunions, is usually caused by a mismatch between the natural shape of the foot and the shape of modern day shoes. The best way to explain this is by comparing babies and adults' feet. Baby's feet are widest towards the tips of the toes, whereas the widest part of most adult's feet is just below the base of the toes. Why is that? Well, it's because the widest part of most shoes is just below the toes. They then taper to a point, unlike the natural forefoot shape seen in children. Over time, our feet start to conform to the shape of our shoes in the same way that our bones set to the shape of a cast after a break. So if we want to preserve or recover the natural shape of our feet, we ought to start paying attention to the shape of our shoes. This is where barefoot shoes fit into the picture. They preserve the natural shape of the forefoot because instead of narrowing to a point like most shoes, they widen at the end, allowing all the toes to remain in their proper alignment. The optimal scenario would be to wear barefoot shoes from childhood or simply to walk barefoot to prevent developing toe misalignment issues such as bunions. However, an adult whose feet are already misaligned can still gain much benefit from barefoot shoes because they allow enough space for the toes to realign themselves. The second benefit of barefoot shoes is that they promote correct joint alignment and posture in the body. You see, a well-aligned human body is like a neat stack of Jenga blocks. If we alter a stack of Jenga blocks by placing a wedge underneath it, all the pieces above have to shift in order to keep the structure erect and prevent the pile from toppling over. In the same way, a heel wedge such as the one found in most footwear causes all the joints upstream of the feet to compensate by changing position in an attempt to maintain balance in the system, resulting in misalignment in the upper structures of the body. It is for this reason that all properly designed barefoot shoes are zero drop, which means that they are totally flat and do not have a raised heel. This enables the body to maintain its natural alignment. The third benefit of barefoot shoes is the restoration of joint mobility. You see, when we constantly have an altered posture due to standing on a heel wedge, certain muscles and tendons become chronically tight because of the compensations they have to make to adapt to the change in joint positions. Take for example the Achilles tendons. A raised heel shoe forces it into a shortened position, which over time causes the Achilles tendons to adapt to the position by becoming chronically tight. This phenomenon is known as adaptive shortening. The same thing happens to the muscles and connective tissue in the other joints upstream since heeled footwear changes the entire alignment of the body. So by wearing barefoot shoes, we can reduce these issues. And considering that we spend 10 plus hours a day wearing them, they should give us more value than a five minute mobility or foam rolling session per day. Another benefit of barefoot shoes is the ability to help strengthen our feet. As you know, our bodies are strengthened by movement, whereas we become weaker when we stop moving for prolonged periods. A prime example of this is when we break a bone in one of our arms or legs, and the limb is placed in a cast that restricts joint movement. After a few weeks, when the cast is removed, a noticeable loss of muscle size can be seen, along with a significant reduction in strength. Well, similarly to a cast, traditional footwear is thick, rigid, and highly supportive. These characteristics reduce the amount of motion in the 33 joints in each foot. Over time, the restricted amount of movement weakens the intrinsic foot muscles. Barefoot shoes, on the other hand, have ultra-thin and flexible soles that allow the feet to move unhindered. Thus, when we wear them, the extra freedom of movement causes the intrinsic foot muscles to be exercised fully, helping them to remain strong or to regain their strength. Continuing on this train of thought, the fifth benefit of barefoot shoes is how they can help increase foot arch height and compliancy. Let me explain. Our foot arches behave like springs during load-bearing tasks such as walking and running. This spring-like ability is necessary to absorb impact forces and recoil them back into the next step. In fact, research shows that as much as 17% of mechanical energy is conserved by a well-functioning foot arch while running. It is for this reason that most barefoot shoes don't have inner arch support, but rather flat and minimal interiors, thus enabling the arch to do what it is supposed to do. By contrast, the arch support in most shoes nowadays fills in the gap between the ground and the arch, thus preventing proper movement through the arch. 
This not only causes us to become less efficient movers, but also weakens the foot arch over time. I mean, logically, how can our feet build independent strength if they always have artificial support? We can therefore compare the wearing of minimalist barefoot shoes to the removal of training wheels from a bicycle. Without the additional support, we have to rely on our inbuilt stability system, in this case the foot arch, to take over. The adjustment definitely takes some practice, but once we get used to it, that's when the real progress can begin. On a side note, we have developed a 24-week barefoot shoe transition plan which shows you how to safely remove those training wheels and start getting the benefits from minimalist footwear. Links are down below. Okay, so the final and probably the most interesting benefit of wearing barefoot shoes is an increased sense of ground feel. If we stick any type of cushion between our feet and the ground, it blocks our ability to directly feel the floor beneath us. This limited sensory feedback has been shown to reduce our movement efficiency. Let's use a practical example to drive this point home. When you wear a pair of thick winter gloves, your ability to feel objects and to perform intricate tasks, such as writing, are severely hampered. Well, it is no different with our feet. The bottoms of our feet are constantly receiving rich sensory information on our balance, speed, and the ground reactive forces that our bodies have to deal with. So when we blunt our ability to properly feel the ground, it is a major hindrance to our ability to appropriately react to our environment. And this is another area in which barefoot shoes shine. Their thin soles enable our feet to feel much more of the environment beneath us. For instance, walking on a gravel path with barefoot shoes becomes a very rich sensory experience. Every little stone, slope and texture can be felt. Of course, if you're not accustomed to barefoot footwear, rocky terrain can feel uncomfortable at first. This is because your feet are not used to dealing with all that stimulation. But I can safely say that after wearing barefoot shoes for many years, I have become so accustomed to feeling the ground around me that I couldn't bear the thought of losing that sensory stimulation. All right, now moving on to the six types of barefoot shoes and how to decide which ones to choose. We have included links to all our recommendations in the description of this video, including the names of the shoe brands and models we have personally tested in relation to each of the following categories. First up is the classic barefoot shoe. This one is designed for pure performance. It has all the necessary barefoot characteristics. These features are a wide foot-shaped toe box that does not squish the toes together, zero drop, which means no heel lift or toe spring, a thin and flexible outer sole, no arch support. Because of these natural design elements, most people will find classic barefoot shoes the best fit for their everyday lifestyles, but they can be pretty demanding on the feet at first, so a slow acclimatization to these shoes are recommended. The next class is the transitional barefoot shoe. These types of barefoot shoes usually have wide, foot-shaped toe boxes, but their soles are a little thicker at 10 millimeters or more. So if you're not yet ready to go all in on a pair of classic barefoot shoes, or have very weak feet that can't handle the muscular demands of wearing extremely thin and flexible soles right away, then we suggest grabbing a transitional pair. At least they have a good toe box design, which in our opinion is the most important design characteristic to get right in a shoe. The third class of shoes on our list are minimalist shoes that don't have the foot-shaped toe box that we need for proper alignment of the toes, although they have thin and flexible soles. Common examples of these types of minimal shoes are Vans, All Stars, and Fayus. While these shoes are an improvement on traditional footwear that has no barefoot characteristics, we still cannot recommend them due to their insufficient toe box width. As explained in the beginning of the video, pushing the toes out of alignment is just too much of an issue to overlook. Next up are barefoot shoe socks, or as I like to call them, shocks. This is a relatively new class of barefoot shoe that is ultra minimal in design. It is basically a sock that has a thin rubberized undersole. This type of footwear is designed to give the most amount of ground feel and foot mobility possible. While this can be great for someone who has had a lot of experience being barefoot, it might be too much for a newbie to handle at first. Your feet have to work really hard in these socks. It's almost like being totally barefoot. Another word of caution, shoe socks must also have wide enough toe boxes to keep the feet in good alignment. That's why in our recommended barefoot shoe list below, we include only the socks that have a wide enough toe area. Moving on to the Vibram Five Fingers, the fifth type of barefoot shoe on our list. Five Fingers is the shoe that sparked off the barefoot shoe craze more than a decade ago. Their producers took the barefoot concept really literally by designing shoes that look just like feet. 
Each of the toes has its own slot to fit into so they can move independently of one another just like when we are completely barefoot. In our experience the concept works really well. One has a definite sense of freedom when wearing these shoes and since they are still very popular so many years after making their debut it's clear that many people share the same sentiment. The only word of caution would be that they take a bit of time getting used to especially for those with bunions because of the toe separations. Talking about bunions you will find a link to a separate video we did on the 10 best shoes for bunions in the description below. Okay, so the sixth and final class of barefoot footwear on our list is the barefoot sandal. They are just like regular sandals except they have thinner, more flexible soles. We have found the toe thong design to be the best because it prevents the toes from being squished together, which is a problem with the horizontal strap design you see here. Barefoot sandals usually also have a heel strap feature which makes them suitable for running. But again, a slow adaptation is recommended when beginning to run in them. Barefoot sandals are a must-have for any barefoot enthusiast. They are also relatively cheaper than the shoes, so they might be a good gateway into the barefoot shoe realm for those unwilling to spend too much cash at the beginning of their barefoot shoe journey. We actually haven't done an in-depth barefoot sandal review yet, so if this is something you would like us to do in the future, let us know in the comments below. Anyway, that concludes our video. If you found value in this content, you know what to do. Until next time, cheers.